r slash ask reddit there is a well-known saying that goes always give the hardest job to the laziest person because they will find the easiest way to do it what is the best real life example to this you have seen herding yak with a drone takes a cake for me they run from it and oddly fear it which is surprising considering they have literally zero aerial predators we only did it a few times because it really makes them uneasy and doesn't treat them well but it is very effective and easy and you can herd them from over one stroke to a mile away from inside the house i used to deliver beer i did not like delivering beer I may have ended up with 30 stops in a day, including deliveries that the customer would call into our office for. I used to bring extra beer and blank invoices with me on the truck, to prevent having to drive back to my warehouse to deliver one keg to a place that I was currently across the street from. 7 years later, the driver of that route is still doing that. I work in a semi-warehouse environment and we have to track where items are at all times. When we move X item from location A to location B we had to type out the to and from locations. We do this hundreds of times a shift. I went online to a free barcode maker website and spent about 20 minutes making location barcodes. I save hours a day by scanning barcodes. In high school we had to do 4 book reports every year. A friend of mine did his on each Lord of the Rings books in the Hobbit freshman year and turned in the same 4 book reports for the rest of his time in high school. You switched English teachers every year so no one ever caught on. I was never brave enough to try the same thing. I remember having to peel 20 kilograms of charred eggplant at a restaurant I worked in. I asked the chef if there was an easier way to do it. His reply was yep. Get someone else to do it. At my last job. A truck suspension shop. We did inventory every December and it was someone's job to count all the washers and screws of every size. It was my first inventory and I casually mentioned that they should just weigh one screw or washer. Then weigh them all and divide the weight to get the count. Everyone looked at me like I had given them the key to the universe. Counting washers and screws went from a day or two. To just a few hours. I'm in corporate accounting, and I'm the only one in my department with a CPA, of course. I have to take continuing education for my license, and I usually take as many hours of Excel courses as I can each year, by learning the keyboard shortcuts, advanced formulas, and a bunch of useful hidden features in Excel. I'm able to get most of my work done in less than 2 hours, then spend the rest of the day browsing Reddit and watching YouTube videos. Thank goodness our cubicle walls are high, or I'm sure they would have fired me by now for being on my phone 6 plus hours each day. Automated 70% of my job in a large finance firm as an intern. Never disclosed it and got paid easy money for 6 months. I spent the time doing courses and applying for my grad school. Got my admission letter during the final 2 weeks of my internship and never looked back. Pro tip, Python and Excel can be your best friend. There's a story that I've heard a few dozen times about a toothpaste company that had accidentally sent out cases of their product that had a few empty single boxes of toothpaste. The company had endeavored, not only to rectify their mistake, but to ensure they did not repeat it. They hired an engineering company that designed a scale and alarm shutdown system. If an empty carton was passed down the production line, Claxons would be triggered, and a full stop would initiate until the offending box was recovered, and an all clear had been entered into the computer system, before production could resume. The company paid through the nose, but was ultimately pleased with their fail safe, and the engineers patted each other on the back. A few months pass, and the engineers returned for quality control. The toothpaste company reported zero margin of error for weeks. Turns out, one of the minimum wage air types on the assembly line didn't appreciate the sound of klaxons, or working with computers, so, he or she had aimed a large fan at the production line, before the scale, that blew the lighter, empty cartons off of the conveyor belt, problem solved. Was tiling a bathroom floor, one young guy I was working with was cleaning up when we were done, I told him to take the leftover tile back downstairs to the truck and then went back to cleaning what I was doing. 10 seconds later I hear this huge crash and then a soft toe. Right. He had gone out onto the balcony and dropped them down to the truck, shattering over $100 worth of tile. He said he thought it would be faster. He wasn't exactly wrong. 
I have an example of how the truly lazy will sabotage tracking so no one knows shit is broken. There was this guy at a software company that does integrated software systems. He hated his boss and his job and apparently most of his team. Every time he was assigned a bug to fix, he would mark it resolved and assign it to a no reply email address associated with the team. The odd thing that I don't understand is how he managed to keep issues from getting escalated to other real people. At any rate, no one caught on. When he found a new job and a couple people on his team took him out for drinks he said, you should look into all the bugs I fixed. I never did any of that. So the guys who took him out for drinks went back and audited his work and were like holy duck. He not only did nothing, he hid identified issues for like a year. My friend who'd take his baby's clothes off when he fed him. Next level brilliant. Spray the kid off after. My teacher not wanting to grade papers so he gives us easy shit to do. When I worked at an inpatient unit one of the tasks we'd get would be to do a check in with every patient. There were about 100 when we were full. Nobody wanted that task. It would usually get split up. Except this one guy who was pretty lazy always wanted it and I didn't understand it because he was lazy. Finally one day I was walking out for a break and I figured out what he did. He plopped himself right beside the food line door and wouldn't let people go in until they did their check in with him. That's not how it was supposed to be done. It was supposed to be a chance for clients to connect with staff. But he'd get it done in an hour or so for the whole unit and be done for the day. Edited to add. Yes it was in a mental health facility. Kinda figured my username would give that away. This wasn't to assess for suicidality. That was a separate task in which people were given as much privacy as possible during morning meds. You sign something when you enter a group treatment center that says you understand that it's group treatment and confidentiality is limited. Worked as a cashier during the holiday season back when I was 16. The supermarket was selling drinks by the boxes and at that time, we only had barcode scanners that was at the front of the computer. No gun type scanners existed. I was lazy and didn't want to carry boxes up to the scanner. So I politely asked my customers if I could carve out the barcode from their box to scan and keep. Some agreed some didn't want to but eventually I managed to amass all the barcodes needed, labeled them and kept them in a file for easy reference. Apparently some other cashier got green eyed at my smart move and complained to the chief cashier who promptly lectured me on, bullshit alert, how it's dangerous for me to scan such barcodes as I might scan the wrong things. She told me to throw it all away and carry the boxes like I was meant to, I mean. I was young so I could but the other cashiers were older and some were elderly and needed the customers themselves to help carry the boxes to the scanner. But whatever I guess jealousy trumps common sense. I worked at a chain restaurant and in my last few months there we got those stupid tables I asked that customers could pay at. There was a survey at the end of every transaction and our managers added new performance metrics based on how many people paid using the Zyask and also how well our service was based on the surveys. One a-hole would just fill the surveys out himself after his customers left and gave himself 5 stars in everything. Dude was always ranked top of the servers. Ducking genius. I don't know that I have a specific example, but a buddy of mine and I used to spend our time working out the most efficient way to do our jobs. We used to tell ourselves I'm not being lazy, I'm just being efficient. It became an almost daily thing. Why are we doing it this way? This is stupid. There must be an easier way. Then we'd find that and implement it. Nine months ago, I'd made my job so easy it was eliminated. Be careful what you wish for. I did this. A few years back, I was roommates with a super mechanically inclined dude. Our top loading clothes washer stopped working well because the lid got a little warped and didn't trip the safe switch for the spin cycle to run anymore. He was all geared up to pull the washer out, take it apart, bend the lid back into proper shape, and reseat the sensor so it would run properly. I told him to hold off, I put a load of laundry in, and popped a quarter inch shim under the lid. It ran perfectly. Worked in a huge hotel by the airport. We had layover with over 400 people. I think we were 3 employees. They had buffet for dinner and then left to go to bed since it was 1 or 2 am. Rule was, we should always go to the room and pick up as many plates as we could and then bring them to the cleaner. Took 4 ages and I wanted to go home. I decided to roll out the cart and collect the plates and put them on the cart. Guests were seeing it and started putting their plates on the cart when they left. 
All of a sudden hundreds of people cleaned up their own stuff. Duty manager saw it and I thought he would blast me. Since the hotel was a 5 star place, he just looked at me, smiled and said that's why I like to hire lazy people. They think of ways to finish work faster. My parents were having a summer get together a couple of years ago and my dad wanted my brother and I to dig a small pit for a bonfire. He handed us two shovels and left us to dig. My brother went and started up our old tractor, drove it across the lawn, dropped the bucket into the earth and drove forward a few feet. The pit ended up a little larger than what we had planned but once we lined it with stones it was actually a pretty nice pit. Someone gave me a report they'd been doing manually for literally years, using nothing but Excel and access databases that took two people upwards of nearly three hours to complete. Got that shit automated down to 30 seconds in a few days. I'm not about your stupid VLOOKUP bullshit. Brittany. I worked a summer at a mortgage company as an assistant to the underwriters. My only job was printing documents and then hole punching them to put in folders. They had a super fancy Xerox printer that basically did my entire job for me. But the underwriters at this company didn't know how to click through printer settings to make the machine hole punch as it was being printed. I showed them how to do it, and they resisted it super hard, like they didn't trust it, idk, so I got to keep my job, but what was supposed to take me all day literally took me about 20-30 minutes first thing in the morning, so they started assigning me real tasks, and even offered to keep me on to eventually become an underwriter, too, because I was so sharp that is. I knew how to use the very expensive printer they already had. I was just about to start grad school, so I had to politely decline. But I'm pretty sure they didn't hire someone to replace me when I left. Too long didn't read. They had a printer that already did my job for me but didn't know how to use it. I showed them. I had an Excel order form in my last job that required us to enter all hardware items from all suppliers in by hand. I had to completely rewrite the existing script that pulled the hardware for the one supplier that it worked on but it went from being a time consuming, mistake prone job to clicking a button on the order form and it doing everything and taking maybe 2 seconds for a huge job. Figuring out dynamic named ranges and getting them to work with drop down boxes was also great. No more manually updating named ranges and drop down boxes when new items were added. I also added in conditional formatting everywhere to let the user know if there was an incomplete section on the form. No more rework when the next person down the line sent the form back to us incomplete. The thing I was really happy with was being able to cut the length of that script down by about 65% from what it originally was. Got hired into a plant that just got a big new job building stuff for the military. My job was materials associate which basically meant I drove a forklift and staged parts that were built. The engineers came up with a floor plan for all of the parts and where they needed to be staged. They used fancy lasers and measuring devices and built it all in CAD. After telling them it wouldn't work they said well let's see you do a better job. I organized the entire 50,000 SQFT warehouse so that each part was close to the machines that use them. It followed the first in first out method, and each department knew where their parts went when they were done making them put up signs and whatnot. After that my job was basically pointless because the warehouse ran itself. I decided to teach myself how to use the welding robots in my downtime. Fast forward 3 years and now I'm an automation engineer at one of the largest parts supplier in the industry. P.S. Robots are very easy to learn and operate if you're struggling to find what you want to do in your career. Places are hiring with minimal experience too cause there is a huge lack of people in the automation field. Get a 1 year college certification in mechatronics and you can make around 40-60k starting depending on location. I had to research a US senator or something, Dong Durbin, and I couldn't find a lot of information on him. I didn't want to spend 1-2 hours researching somebody I didn't care about. So I went to his website and directly emailed him my research questions. He never responded. One time we were selling an electric lift at work and I loaded it with a forklift. But we had to push it all the way into his truck at a weird angle. They had some ideas but before they could stop me from doing it the way I wanted I just pushed in and by its forks with my forks. Touch tips all the way and worked perfectly. I always try to do as much as I possibly can without getting out of the forklift. 
worked construction right out of high school to save money for school. Once every other week, we'd get a shipment of 100s door parts, and they made me match serial numbers to parts and orders and confirm we got everything. Then organize it all. It literally took 16 hours at least, and time moved so slowly. So I got fed up with it and made a python app that would take a list of pictures, extract text from the pictures, compare it to a order receipt, then spit out a list of all missing parts and extra parts. So it knocked it down to an hour process of just throwing the door parts in the correct pile while waiting for the script to run. The worst part is that I didn't even get a raise for doing it. Eating cheetahs with chopsticks so you don't have to wipe your fingers while playing video games. My professor asked me to check the answer sheets of a test. By utilizing the readily available algorithms in image processing, machine learning, I made a mobile app that takes a picture of the answer sheet and return the score. Electrical engineer here. I'm pretty sure my entire field exists out of laziness. Back when I was a cashier at Borders we had to keep a certain percentage of Borders rewards transactions. I was good at my job and was able to get in the high 80s low 90s every month by being a good salesman and convincing them to get it. There was another guy I worked with that had an insanely high percentage and I didn't understand how he did it. We later came to find out that he would just swipe a card and put it into people's bags without saying anything about it. He got caught and was given a warning and put on probation instead of being fired for cheating. Fast forward about a month and I find out he's getting promoted to work on the floor with all the movies and music. I could not believe they promoted him after all that shit and looked me over. Someone that was actually a hard worker that did a really good job and often would have people compliment me to my managers. Then again the management there was shit. I eventually got fired from there because the guy covering for me while I was on vacation got fired and they somehow expected me to know and come in. Bro, you made it to the end, you're a ducking beast, I'll cut you a deal, smash like and subscribe for more curated content might, it's free and that's a great price.